All right. This is just a short video. We're going to talk about formatting your data for uh, analysis in either jump or R. And uh, the first concept here is going to be making sure that we have a uh, our data set in uh, what we call a flat format. So it's important that this very first um, row here, row number one, you wanna make sure that that is all of your column headers. And it's really important that your data are all together. So we're gonna talk about the rows here. So you're gonna have your first, your first row is gonna be column headers. And then each of these, of course, is your column, and that's where all your data will go, regardless of how many categories it's in. So I have a series of plots. So I'm gonna have the plot ID. It's helpful to name your columns with a continuous text, or if you're gonna use R, you can put a single dot between the text instead of a space and R likes that, works with that fine. You can always rename these later once they're in the stats programs. So when you're working with your graphs, you'll have a chance to rename these. Um, so for the time being, you want them to be short, easy to type, and easy to work with. <coughs> um, it can be helpful um, to create multiple data sheets, one in which you've really clearly, um, you wanna make sure that you know the units for each of these, of course. Um, so you can have one data sheet where you've identified those units and given all sorts of what we call metadata related to these. So maybe in a, um, in a row above plot ID, I would put metadata about the project and that sort of thing, but then keep my data here. For now, I'm going to treat this as if it's a file that I just want to import directly into R or jump. And I'm going to leave my column headers as they are. Um, and then my metadata would have to be on another sheet. So say I have plot ID, I'm going to have a data set where I'm uh, measuring a number of trees. Um, and so I have to, uh, tree and I'm going to have, um, uh, let's say tree species. I'm going to have the size of those trees. And this is just a, a made up data set. It could be anything that you're working on. I'm just demonstrating um, what you might do. This size um, is going to be diameter. I'm just going to put DIAM for diameter, so shorter. Um, and let's say I also have um, And let's see, what else could I say? Um, we could have, say, number of birds observed. Say I'm looking at birds landing on individual trees. Okay. Um, and what if I did this in two or three different locations? Okay, I'm going to insert a column here and say that I had different locations. Um, I'm actually going to put all of those together. So I might have plot ID 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm just filling in down to 10 plots here, for example. And if I had two locations, say one location was on the Evergreen campus, okay? I might, I'm gonna duplicate that data. I'm just pasting it in here. I could use the right click and paste for each one or do what I just did. And then I might have one location that's in, um, uh, say it's in Olympia, downtown Olympia or, uh, yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> so I've got two locations then here. One's Olympia and one's Evergreen. It doesn't matter how you fill these down, but you'll notice the location here is duplicated. That's gonna allow me to treat that as a category and get nice summary statistics and run uh, statistics on that. My tree species might be, um, say for Doug Fur, I'm going to use a four letter abbreviation, PSME for Douglas Fur. And then let's say I also looked at some alders, which is Alnus rubra. Use a four letter code here. That makes it really easy. You see that Excel will give me a, a default here that allows me to just auto fill in. Okay, so again, I have a categorical variable here that's gonna be duplicated. So in this case, I measured 
five total uh, Douglas fir and five total um, alders. Um, they were split between two locations, Evergreen and Olympia, um, and I've duplicated that information. And then I'm gonna have size here. And I have height here. You notice that I don't have the units here. If you want to put the units in, I recommend you do it like this if you're going to use uh, R. If you're going to use jump, it doesn't really matter. You can write this in any way you want. Um, but if you're going to use R, put the units in separated by a dot. It'll make your life a lot simpler when it comes to importing this, uh, these data uh, into R. I'm going to make up some heights here. So those are in meters. Okay. Of course, I just made up this data, but this is what your data should look like when they're ready for analysis. So they're going to be in one consistent block with your categories identified in um, different, if you have multiple categories, they'll be identified in separate columns, but uh, within a given category type, all of the categories are going to be listed in that same column in the same sheet. Um, then once we have your data entered, it's important to save it. Of course, you can save this as an Excel file, um, which a lot of you will do. Um, in um, this case, it's also helpful to just uh, save this as a, um, um, you can just save this as a, uh, CSV file, sorry, losing my train of thought there. Um, so there's a number of different ways to select a CSV file. Um, in this case, um, we're gonna go down and just choose MS-DOS CSV. A CSV file is just a comma separated file, uh, really useful for, uh, for uh, accessing your data through multiple different software packages. It's also a really small file, so it's really easy to store. Um, so I'm going to save this as test data. And I'm just going to throw this on my desktop for now. And I'm doing this on a Mac, but um, this is generally the same uh, procedure on a PC, so it should be easy to follow. OK. Um, if I'm going to work in jump, um, it turns out that copy, there's a copy and paste maneuver that is probably uh, the fastest way um, to do this. So um, in jump, I can just go and I can select these data and copy them like this. And then in jump, I can select a new data table. And instead of selecting a cell and pasting here, I can go up to edit and I can paste with column names. So if you haven't followed this, make sure to rewind the video and pause it and make sure that you caught everything that I just did uh, one at a time so you can duplicate it. And then this is very important, paste with column names. When you paste with column names in Jump, it'll automatically name your columns the same way uh, that you had them in Excel. Um, if you paste normally, it will accidentally take these columns and place them as part of your data. Why that's important is that you'll notice over here, um, there are different symbols associated with each of the columns. And when you see the red bars here, it recognizes that these, uh, these data are names and not numbers. And then it recognizes that these columns, um, size, height, number of birds observed, those are all numbers and not names. And it shows us that with this blue triangle. It actually thought plot ID here was um, uh, a number uh, rather than a name. And in this case, this is just a name. The, the number for plot ID just reflects the order in which those data were taken. So what I can do is right click on this and go to column info if I wanna change this. And so I wanna change this to a name instead of numeric here, I'm gonna tell it it's a character 
and then it'll automatically decide that it's nominal data. I hit OK, and you'll see that plot ID has been changed to a nominal variable. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to go through and do any sort of um, analysis that I want to do. If I want to do um, uh, size diameter by location, then I can run that analysis the same way and, and get uh, summaries by location or species or whatever I want to do, just like you did in the lab data. Okay, so that's jump. If you're not interested in jump and instead you want to use R Studio, these data saved as a CSV are ideal for uh, R Studio. To get your data into R Studio, you'll use Import Data Set. Choose the first option from text. This will come up, um, give you a, a window to work with. You can select the data, test data in this case. When you open this, it'll give you the column headers in bold, and there may be a default. The heading is either yes or no. If it's no, then it creates other headers for you, and then it places your column names as part of your data, which is not what you want. So instead, you want to say yes, and then it'll automatically import it with those column headers correctly. Then your data is in R, and it's ready to go. Okay. That's it.